Hello, and thanks for watching. I'm Jonah, and today I'm going to do my best to explain why I don't use the sidereal modifications to human design. And furthermore, why I don't really approve of the various sidereal modification systems as valid metaphysical research programs. To me, a metaphysical research program is just as strict as a scientific research program. It's, it's really quite similar. You know, you undertake a practice whereby you observe and you have a taxonomy, a language, you have these buckets that you can fill with experiences. Um, all of this to me is very, um, you know, it's real. It's real. A metaphysical research program is real. Now, it might not pan out. Just like scientific research programs, there's no guarantee. But it's a real and valid and true undertaking in a way that sidereal astrology is not. So I'm hoping today that I can explain why that is. Okay. Reasons why human design doesn't need sidereal modifications. If there's a key takeaway here, here's kind of the key takeaway. The rave mandala shows the annual cycle that repeats identically every year. One after the next, after the next. The sidereal mandala, which is also used in human design for global cycles, shows the almost 26,000 year cycle of axial precession. Right, so there's the rave mandala, which is the I Ching hexagrams, the gates. And then there's the same exact sequence, but doubled and then rotated, offset. And that's the sidereal mandala. I'm calling it the sidereal mandala. It's also been called, you know, the global cycle mandala and so on, or the, the keys, which I'll get to in a moment. But in any case, the sidereal ma mandala shows the 26,000-year cycle and they move against each other and only sync up once every 26,000 years. So this is the kind of really important thing to understand just from the beginning is what are we really talking about when we're talking about sidereal? We're talking about a 26,000-year cycle. So applying the sidereal adjustment to the rave mandala defeats the purpose of having a second mandala, the sidereal mandala, which already exists in human design and is used for global cycle analysis. It also eliminates the possibility of yielding any useful information whatsoever, except by coincidence. Right? So, okay. What does it mean to make a sidereal modification to the human design wheel? to the rave mandala, as it's called. In cosmic human design, you move everything over 31 degrees. So, you know, it's like what I'm talking about with, we have the two wheels that we use for global cycle analysis in human design. One is the rave mandala, which we also use for individual body graph and so on. And then the other is the sidereal mandala that rotates against it a certain amount, right? So in cosmic human design, formerly true sidereal human design, you move everything over 31 degrees. And other systems use a different number of degrees. And, you know, the systems give reasons why you should use their system. But no matter what system you're using, you're modifying by a certain number of degrees. And that's actually what we already do with the sidereal, um, which will be exactly 23 degrees offset in uh, February 15th, 2027. So, you know, that's something I actually, I can't believe I, look here, let me make sure I, uh, okay, I'll put a note here. Also. Um, okay. Just added a note for later in the talk. Okay. So what does it mean, right? What does it mean to make a sidereal modification? So in cosmic human design, you move everything over by 31 degrees. You know, other systems move it over by different amounts. Obviously, in human design itself, the sidereal mandala is also adjusted by a certain amount of degrees. That'll be exactly 23 degrees in a few years. Right now, it's like 22 degrees, 59 minutes, you know, and so on. Um, 
Okay. Now the offset keeps changing at the same rate for all sidereal systems. This is very important. The sidereal systems do not disagree on the rate. Okay, so if you're learning about should I do sidereal or should I do a normal human design and so on, it's very important for you to understand this. You can't really understand what you're doing unless you understand the differences here, right? So the rate is identical in all the systems, and the rate is approximately 72 years for one degree of movement. So by roughly 2093, the cosmic human design system will be adjusting by 32 degrees. By 2165, it'll be by 33 degrees. By the early 2200s, it'll be by 34 degrees, and so on. And it keeps going, 90 degrees, 180 to you know 270, until it gets all the way back around. And that takes 26,000 years. So you have to realize the sidereal system's on a massive, massive time frame, the 26,000 year cycle of axial precession. And that massive, I mean, it, it does make sense why Mason would call it cosmic human design because it is related to the cosmos in the sense that it's a 26,000 year cycle, not a one year cycle. You know, <laughs> what we're doing with the rave mandala, that is the earthly, it's kind of like that's the earthly and then there's the heavenly cycle, right? And we have both in human design, that's what I'm saying. Already in human design, with your normal non-modified body graph, you are using the annual cycle, the rave mandala. And then if you look at the global cycle analysis, and if you look at the keys that are changing for each era, that is the sidereal mandala moving against the global mandala. I mean, the I should call it the um, earthly the annual mandala. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, right now, sidereal is off by 31 degrees, but in 700 years, it'll be off by uh, 131 degrees, right? And in 1400 years, it'll be off by 231 degrees. That's how much it's adjusting by, and it's constantly adjusting. It's constantly changing. It's constantly, you know, throughout this 26,000 year cycle. Okay, so it's just important to understand this, you know. So at any given point in the axial precession cycle, the offset of sidereal will be between zero degrees and 359 degrees, 59 minutes, 59 seconds, and arc seconds, and whatever. You, you can get as precise as you want. And then, you know, then the point between them will be the exact opposite. And so, and at, at any given arbitrary point in the 26,000 year cycle, you're going to have a pretty much arbitrary offset. What I'm trying to say is the offset will put every gate on every day at some point throughout the 26,000 year cycle. Even this, I had a really hard time explaining to Richard Mason. He didn't really understand how his system did that. Okay. So... So here's some reasons now. Um, so we, we've seen so we've seen how it works. So now these are going to be reasons why human design does not need sidereal modifications. Reason number one: analysis of the fixed stars. So if you look at the fixed stars, you know, like um, I was born with uh, my ascendant conjunct Algol even though because Algol is so far off the ecliptic, it, you know, it's not really like, the conjunction isn't really <laughs> that meaningful perhaps. But in any case, um, you know, you can study fixed stars and, and they're fascinating. I love fixed stars. Fixed stars are incredible. It's one of my first loves. I mean, as a teenager, I, I was fascinated by them even in my 20s. I, I've spent thousands of hours studying the stars or maybe hundreds, but... I've I've been, you know, I for a long time I thought that the stars had some of the secrets, you know, before I, I found human design. And even through human design now, I've still been fascinated. I, I absolutely loved Ra's rave cosmology work on the stars. Uh, and I found out that he also had a passion for the stars. And I, I you know, they're, they're so amazing. They are. And so I love the analysis of the fixed stars, and I love analyzing how the fixed stars move against the gates and so on, but sidereal, if you make a sidereal modification, it breaks this, right? So if you understand what you're doing when you make a sidereal modification to the, to the rave mandala, what you're doing, you're moving all the gates over, and you're fixing them to the fixed stars so that, see, because we call them the fixed stars even though they move around one degree every 72 years from our vantage point. They're not fixed, but... In sidereal, they actually are, you know, if you make the sidereal modification, which again is an erroneous calculation because it, there already is a sidereal, there's a 
annual mandala and there's a 26,000 year mandala and they move against each other. And if you change the rave mandala to become identical to the 26,000 year mandala or at a slightly different offset from that, then those just move on a 26,000 year cycle and you have basically meaningless information. It's meaningless, right? There's no more. But I, I guess I want to explain how this works. Like, like if I were to adopt the sidereal modification, I could no longer analyze the fixed stars. It's impossible in sidereal systems to do the analysis of the movement of the fixed stars against the gates. For instance, Aldebaran moving across gate 16. It's an incredible story. As you see Aldebaran move through the lines of gate 16, right? As Aldebaran moves through the lines of gate 16 over 500 years or so, um, you know, and, and you, you can analyze that and see how much Aldebaran has to do with technology and how particularly when it was in lines that had exaltations and detriments. You know, there was a period of time that was kind of a technological dark age. I forget exactly when, but it pretty much coincided, you know, was it, it's like there was technological advancement and then there was a little technological dark age, you know, within all this advancement. And it coincided with when Aldebaran moved into a line that had neither exaltation nor detriment. And so it wasn't really able to affect the earth, or, you know, in some sense as a neutrino filtering agent because it didn't really have its planetary agents uh, operating for it, so to speak. Well, this movement of Aldebaran against the rave mandala, against the gates, against the lines, that's what happens in human design as the human design system is now. We can study the sidereal movement due to the axial precession. We study the wobble and we study it move against the gates and lines. But if you do a sidereal modification, if you run a sidereal chart and so on, and you modify the rave mandala to do a sidereal, you know, as it is, you move it over 31 degrees. What ends up happening is you're fixing it so that Aldebaran, you know, okay, so I, here's how I wrote it. The wobble's on a roughly 26,000 year cycle. Aldebaran only passes through gate 16 once every 26,000 years. With the sidereal modifications, you don't see this. Aldebaran is just always at the same place forever. So what's funny is, you know, Richard Mason was saying that by using the sidereal system, you're more accurately reflecting the positions of the stars in the sky and so on, which is an unfounded, baseless, sounds really good thing to say, but has nothing to back it up whatsoever. And then what we actually find is in his system, it doesn't represent the sky because what actually does happen is, you know, what truly is happening in reality is that Aldebaran is passing through a particular segment of the ecliptic once every 26,000 years from our vantage point. But in his system, you don't see that. It appears artificially to be placed in the same place forever. So it's so funny to me that Mason was talking so much about the natural. He was calling his system natural. I mean, what does that even mean in this sense? He was calling his system the natural system as if human design were contrived. Hmm. I mean, human design is the absolute of the Maya. What's more natural than that? Okay. So you can't do fixed star analysis. So that's reason number one. It completely eliminates it. And, you know, along with that makes it look like the fixed stars are always in the same place in the sky. And they're not, you know, they're not. They, they're only in the same place once every 26,000 years. I mean, Okay, the gates of the G-Center. So here's reason number two why you should not be doing sidereal modifications or sidereal charts. In human design, the G-Center is very special and its gates line up to the equinoxes, the solstices, and the midpoints between those, those dates. And when you decouple the gates from the ecliptic, they move on a 26,000 year cycle and only once every so often during the 26,000 year cycle do they actually line up to the eight equidistant divisions of the year. I mean, I guess eight times during the 26,000 year cycle, they'll line up, but each time they'll be, only one of those will be correct. You know, so you know, what I'm trying to say is, if you study the gates of the G center, you know, look at your, look at your body graph, go on mybodygraph.com and they have a way you can view with the rave mandala. And it shows the full mandala, not just the kind of normal body graph. And look at the gates of the G center and notice that they are the eight equidistant golden yellow, you know, divisions of that rave mandala. 
and then look at what day of the year they're on, you know? Um, and and the, the, the second lines will be the actual um, solstices and the equinoxes and the midpoints. And it's really beautiful to see. And if you read the values of the lines and so on, you know, I mean, doing the sidereal modification doesn't just break a few things. It breaks everything, you know. It, it really does break everything. It's incredible what this third line manifestor's impact has been while making mistakes. Okay, reason number three. Oh, and just, I hope reason number two is clear. If it's not, um, put it in the comments. I can try to explain better. But really, if you just study where the G-center gates are, they, they mark these, they mark um, solstices and midpoints. And of course, if you do the serial modification, that doesn't happen anymore. Reason number three, the quarters in the Rave Mandala. The study of the Rave Mandala itself should make clear to anyone who dives deep that it would be impossible for it to refer to anything other than the annual cycle. For instance, references to some gates refer to, you know, mammalian mating season as remnants from the past, which is, of course, an annual season. But some of the gates are seasonal in reference, talking about the darkest times of the year and so on. It's clear that the Mandala itself refers to the annual cycle, not the 26,000 year cycle. I, I don't mean darkest time of the year. Uh, here, I'll put it darkest times of the year emotionally. <laughs> I mean, of course, that's somebody's opinion. I mean, you know, I'm not saying even that Ra said this, but you know, I just, I, I guess I'm just saying in human design culture, people talk about, oh, it's that time of year again. It's Aries season. We got, you know, these gates coming up and it's that time of year again. And that's all I'm really saying is that at various points in Ra's lectures and also in just the human design community at large, as it's practiced, um, there's an understanding that what the gates are referring to is actually the annual cycle. Because we already have another version of those gates that are offset, you know, sidereally. We already have that. We already use that. So we don't, yeah, we, we understand that, you know, by making a sidereal modification to the body graph, you're not gaining anything. You're losing the ability to do body graph analysis. Okay. Human design is, okay, so reason number four. Human design is post-1781 knowledge. So it's basically, it's knowledge that's for this contemporary time. It's not knowledge about a 26,000 year cycle. We, we get knowledge of the cycles through global cycle analysis. In fact, we get knowledge of all of the cycles up to this point and all of the cycles into the future up to the point around 13, 1400 years from now, you know, which would kind of be the end um, of, of this round. But, um, you know, it's, it's newer knowledge that's supposed to be, it's like a metaphysical research program that's there to help you, that you need to be able to navigate annually. You can't really navigate it. You know what I mean? Like, there is no annual cycle if you do a sidereal if you do a sidereal adjustment to the body graph, if you make a sidereal body graph, a sidereal chart, if you're using a sidereal rave mandala, there's no annual cycle. You're studying at that point a 26,000 year cycle. For the wheel to have useful information, it must be tied to the year. That way, you have people born at the same time each year, being born at the same gate, in the same line, in the same color, in the same tone, in the same base. You know, everyone born on at this particular 11 hour window of time has this particular profile on this particular, you know, and you can get very precise in that. And um, not, not 11 hour, be tw uh, 21 hour window, you know, or a two hour window in the case of um, the transitional profiles. I mean, just think of that. Every year there's these little tiny two hour windows or every year there's, um, when, when the sun is in 34 or 20, there's 5.7 days of manifesting generators. You know, all of these kinds of things that happen, like the percentages of manifesting generators in the world, the consistency that every year there's, you know, 5.7 days of manifesting generators twice. So there's actually like 11.4 days or whatever. Um, you know, not to mention the others that are kind of randomly there, but there's a certain consistency. There's also 11.4 days of 43.23 being activated. There's also 11.4 days of 3740 being activated. And these annual cycles that make sure that there's, you know, what, what I'm trying to say is if the gates are constantly moving, it breaks everything. For the wheel to have useful information, it must be tied to the year. People being born at the same time each year are born in the same profile. Like, 
I have people that are born that are, are my birthday twins. And I've studied all my birthday twins. And I've studied all these birthday twins of mine who were born at various times through history at the same day as me, often on the same line as me, right? The same profile, the same incarnation cross. There are 768 unique combinations of profile and incarnation cross. So to know which of the 12 profiles you are for that gate, right? It's so powerful. And to be able to look at others who are that same profile on that same gate. You can't do this with sidereal. For a full 26,000 year cycle to have to complete, it would just not make any sense. Tying the gates to the 26,000 year cycle would make sense for the elder gods, but not for us. You know, because an elder god could live 26,000 years, but not us. We need something that we can monitor on an annual cycle. I mean, what I'm trying to say is, this is orders of magnitude different. This is 26,000 times slower of a cycle. That's macrocosmic scale. We can't understand something 26,000 times slower than us, than our, than our year, I should say. To be able to study the year, to be able to study the cycle of the year, to be able to study the movement through the profiles, through the incarnation process of the year, I mean, that's what reflectors do, it, you know, even with at not, not only the year, but at the monthly level, at all of the levels, really, at all of the synodic cycle levels. And at all of these synodic cycle levels, as they move through and activate the gates in a fixed sequence and so on, that would begin to drift. So that if, you know, for me, I'm looking at someone born, you know, a few years apart from me, because it takes 72 years to move a degree, I might get lucky and they might still be you know, a fifth line like me. But if I study a historical figure born on the same day as me, they would have none of the same incarnation cross or profile. Not that I'm spending a lot of time studying historical figures and also human design analysis is um, not really made for anything before 1781. But I guess what I'm trying to say is, you know, even studying somebody from the 1960s or something, you know, because of the movement, because of fixing the gates to the 26,000 year cycle, that's broken. I can't do that. Like, like it doesn't make sense, right? You can see how, you know, people, people want to believe that there's some value because it's the sunk cost fallacy. The sunk cost fallacy is that there must be some value. And so people keep sinking more and more time and energy into things that are really worthless. And cosmic human design, Richard Mason's work, is worse than worthless. It's harmful and worthless. Okay. Global cycles. In human design, there's already the study of global cycles, which is the movement of the sidereal wheel against the fixed wheel. It's similar to the idea in ancient China of two wheels, the uh, Hoshu and the Loshu, or something, you know, something like that, the, the, the heavenly and earthly wheel. And one is fixed and the other is moving, or the other moves against it. And we can see the fixed wheel as the locks of the global cycles, which are the eight gates of the G center. Moving against it is a second wheel, a second rave mandala. I've been calling it the sidereal mandala. And that is the keys. And each key moves into a lock at a particular time determined by the axial precession of, of 25,771 and a half years. Uh, I've been saying 26,000 for convenience. The global cycles move at such a slow pace, they really are the steps of the elder gods. Um, and then I was going to, this was my note that I typed earlier, that when we get to the point of the talk of global cycles, I wanted to mention, if you use sidereal modifications, 2027 and all the global cycle analysis is now meaningless. So if you're doing sidereal modifications, you break the ability to do global cycle analysis because you're tying the very gates themselves to, you know, you're losing, again, there's two wheels in human design and you're losing one of them as soon as you make it sidereal because you already have a sidereal one, right? So by making this sidereal then, you've lost it and there's nothing to move against. There's no two systems moving against each other. There's just one system. So, you know, somehow Richard Mason came up with his own... First, he said global cycles were pointless and were wrong and, like, just you don't need to use them at all. Then he made his own version of them and he said, actually, the 2027 number is wrong. We're actually hundreds of years away from the end of the cross of planning, which is ludicrous for anybody who um, has eyes and can look at the world we're in right now. Okay, 
even referring to human design in the tropical zodiac is confusing. So I got along with calling the rave mandala in human design the tropical zodiac, because it's linked to the celestial equator, i.e. the annual cycle and the ecliptic and so on. But however, the premise of sidereal astrology has to do with the conflation of constellations with signs. Human design does not use constellations or signs. The signs are included for convenience and sometimes referred to because human design is a competing metaphysical research program to the many other competing research programs. Traditional Western astrology, Hellenistic astrology, archetypal astrology, all the different kinds. For convenience and to make interesting commentary, human design references these other metaphysical research programs. For instance, pointing out the gates of Libra being all splenic after getting kicked off by 46 in the G-Center, um, you know, or the or Taurus, um, you know, individual circuitry in Taurus and so on. But the point remains, human design has never conflated constellations with signs, nor does it use either in its analysis. So let's see what number one now. I kind of got, got lost. Um, yeah, so we're on number six. Number six is that the reasons that sidereal astrologers give for using sidereal astrology have to do with constellations and signs, neither of which are used in human design. Okay, reason number seven. Sidereal human design came out of conspiracy theories. This one really disappointed me. I found out that uh, Richard was a QAnon guy. So um, the only comment I have here, check out Penta. You know, if you're a conspiracy theorist, just table your conspiracy theories for a little bit and learn about Penta and you'll, you'll have your mind blown and you'll realize that the real conspiracy is these trans auric forms. You know, the, the uh, real conspiracy is family, if you want to put it that way. <laughs> but not just family, I mean any trans auric form. Competing trans auric forms that don't really care about you. They just want to use you, um, you know, for their own survival. Although there can also be some lovely, uh, I have to admit, I, you know, I'm not, I'm a Penta person, I have a Penta channel. Okay, uh, let me see, where are we looking at here? Okay, number eight. So this one's not such a strong reason because I, I don't necessarily find any value, even if it were the case that sidereal systems were being consistent with themselves. But the eighth reason I'm giving is that sidereal practices are applied inconsistently. Richard Mason talks about variable width signs to better match the constellations, although, again, irrelevant, while not applying this aspect of true sidereal astrology to his own system. I mean, he's being very disingenuous. People were asking about the variable width signs of true sidereal astrology, and he was describing, you know, how, you know, some signs are really, like, Scorpio is only 7 degrees and Virgo is 40 degrees and all these kind of weird adjustments to the signs, and yet he doesn't even apply these principles to his own system despite originally taking the name from true sidereal astrology. So maybe other sidereal systems will at least be internally consistent, but that remains to be seen. And even if so, they will simply be consistently wrong. And as such, may have slightly more value than Mason's cosmic human design, which can't even be wrong in a consistent manner. Okay, is that number eight? Okay, we're on number nine. The human design experiment requires observation, not resonance. Harmony or resonance are concepts that we explore in human design, and the words are multivalent and rich with use. You know, that means they have many values, many ways we can use these words. And they're rich with use in such concepts as resonance mapping at the design personality levels. However, when people talk about if a reading resonates with them or not, they're often talking about how much they can recognize themselves in it. So here I defer to Lacan. Understanding Lacan's theory of recognition, which is also always misrecognition, is very helpful in understanding the difference between observation versus recognizing oneself in a description. Sidereal approaches rely on recognition. People say, my chart resonates with me so much, I never resonated as being emotionally defined. I always thought that I was you know, so on. I never resonated with me. And what they're talking about is recognition rather than observation. If you want to do the sidereal experiment, be my guest, but don't pretend you're doing human design. Gene Keys doesn't pretend to be human design. You know. 
But the point is even Gene Keys I, I find has more value because at least Gene Keys is an alternative competing metaphysical research program. I don't practice Gene Keys. I read the Gene Keys material simply it's like know thine enemy, you know, but um, Okay, human design is a practice like psychoanalysis. This is reason number 10. And um, so human design is a practice. It's a practice. You know, sidereal human design is not what he was calling sidereal human design. It's not a practice, not yet anyway. So in my comment here, human design is a practice like psychoanalysis. When Jacques Siboney was asked, how long will I be in psychoanalysis for? He replied, do you ask your tennis instructor how long you might be learning tennis? Right? Because it's a practice. Psychoanalysis is a practice. You practice analyzing your dreams. You practice seeing things a certain way and analyzing and really it's a metaphysical research program. You know, you practice having these words that you use to describe things and seeing what fits into them or not and knowing something about a person, seeing how they behave. You know, if you're a psychoanalyst and you're learning what is the difference in the obsessional versus the hysteric and you have examples of each and, you know, and so on. It's a practice. And the human design system, while young, is nevertheless a metaphysical research program that has been undertaken as a practice by an incredibly mutative group of freaks and geniuses. So to ignore the actual practitioners of this system, or even more, to imply that they are trapped in a lower vibrational matrix while their energy is being harvested and, you know, by making certain arbitrary adjustments to the system, i.e. sidereal modifications, they can evolve and become higher vibrational beings. You know, um, yeah. No. And finally, reason number 11. The major proponent of sidereal modifications does not understand what he's proposing. He doesn't understand astronomy. Richard Mason literally does not understand the system he is talking about. Like when I explained to him how fixed stars will always be at the exact same position in a sidereal addressing system, whereas in the current human design system, I was to say, whereas in the human design system, they move across the gates. So we can do the analysis like we did of, of you know, Aldebaran moving across gate 16 and so on. So Mason continued to say that he was not sure if what I was saying was true or not, when it's a fundamental premise of his system. I wasn't making a new claim. I was stating a fundamental premise of his very system, and he had no idea whether his system was making that claim or not. That's bad. When a creator of a system doesn't understand what their system is actually saying, what ontological commitments, what fundamental assumptions it must make, and you take the time to patiently explain to them exactly how their own system works, and they still don't get it. It's bad. And a quote from Charles Babbage. On two occasions I have been asked, pray, Mr. Babbage, if you put into the machine wrong figures, will the right answers come out? I am not able rightly to apprehend the kind of confusion of ideas that could provoke such a question. I think all of us feel a little bit like Babbage, all of us in the human design world anyway, seeing some of the questions coming up around this sidereal, because even Mason's questions, Richard Mason's questions, it's like I wanted to tell him, like, I don't actually understand how wrong your logic has to be, what kind of confusion of ideas you must have to, that could even provoke such a question. Because it's obviously such a confusion of ideas, you know, that's, that's incomprehensible to me. You know, the complete lack of understanding. And then using words, very vague, hand-wavy words to, to, to describe things with. Okay, where is sidereal useful in human design? In global psychoanalysis of the keys, which use the sidereal mandala, moving against the locks, conventional wave mandala, such that each era has specific keys for unlocking the perennial aspects of humanity's love, identity, and direction. That is where sidereal is useful. And that is why, you know, that is one more reason why I am against using the sidereal modifications to the Rave Mandala because it prevents us, it precludes us from ever doing that kind of analysis.
you know, what we, we need the Rave Mandala to represent the annual cycle because then we actually have buckets and placeholders and so on for our experiences that, that well, I mean, first of all, that are accurate, that are actually accurate. I mean, like the, the reason I didn't put, I guess reason number 12 could be, um, it's just not accurate. It's really not. I mean, if you learn the qualities of the gates and of the channels and so on, you see how incredibly, incredibly precise it is, how specific it is. And this incredible specificity and precision is something that is so beautiful and so rare and is, is just completely lost and obliterated by sidereal human design. And the people who are saying that it resonates with them, the advocates of it, have never, never gone to the level of depth and detail and understanding of human design so that they could actually see that in amazing precision um, and how precise these, these placements are, uh, even to the level of, of color, for instance. Uh, and not, not to mention tone, but, but color, um, I mean, tone, obviously, tone is where we get variables. So, I mean, obviously tone. Tone has an incredible impacts on the surface. But if you haven't seen, you know, the beauty of the precision of the analysis of variable, of the analysis of tone, color, line analysis, of the analysis of design and personality resonance mapping, of the analysis of just the 384 lines of the I Ching, let alone the 768 unique combinations of profile and incarnation cross. And if you haven't seen how precise these aspects of human design really are. Start there. You don't need to do your sidereal human design chart. Thanks for watching.